aroused by the states of survival, the alarm system in the body. Our attention is always shifting from different people, different problems, different circumstances. And every one of those elements in our environment has a neurological network in the brain. So the arousal of the stress hormones causes us to try to control and predict everything in our life. And we shift our attention very quickly to all those different elements and the brain starts firing out of order. We've done thousands and thousands of measurements. We've partnered with the HeartMath Institute to teach people how to create and sustain heart coherence. It just requires getting still, closing your eyes, putting your attention on your heart, changing your breath so that you move into the present moment. And when you slow your breathing down, you slow your brain waves down. When you slow your brain waves down, now you're accessing your autonomic nervous system. So then you train a person how to open their heart and feel an elevated emotion. And it takes a little practice. And just like a flower that, that takes time to bloom, mm -hmm. takes a little bit of time. But if mm -hmm. you work in trading the resentment, the frustration or the impatience, for gratitude, appreciation, and thankfulness, and you keep at it, there'll come a moment where that system switches on, and now you're feeling grateful for no reason at all. Right. That's, that's not a bad <laughs> thing, because gratitude, the emotional signature of gratitude, means something's happening to you, something has happened to you, you're receiving something, or you just received something. So your body then, when you're feeling gratitude, is in the perfect state of receiving. So then that means then, you'll accept, believe, and surrender to the thoughts equal to the emotional state of gratitude. If you're living in resentment, you're living in fear, you're living in, in, in patience, you could say, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm with all you want. And that thought's going to stop right at the brainstem and never make its way to the body because the because body is not feeling or because why? Because you're feeling resentment. Uh -huh. And that thought isn't the, that thought is not consistent with the emotion of resentment. Resentment has a different set of thoughts, right? In other words, once you start opening your heart, it begins to move into coherence. It begins to produce a measurable magnetic field up to three meters wide. Now that's frequency, that's energy. And all that energy, that frequency carries information, carries an intent. So then when you're feeling gratitude and your heart is open, you're broadcasting energy into the mm -hmm. field. A now, frequency. A yeah. frequency. You lay the intent of the thought of your health or your wealth, that frequency can carry the thought of your wealth. It can mm. carry the thought of your health. If you're suffering, you can't, the suffering does not carry, that energy does not carry the thought of your wealth. It carries a different set of thoughts. So then, so then we're teaching people how to self-regulate because if you're going to believe in that future that you're imagining with all of your heart, it better be open and activated. Right, right. And you better know how to self-regulate. And you have to know the moment you disconnect from the energy of your future because of some circumstance in your life and you lose that feeling, if you're practicing it on a daily basis with your eyes closed, then the next level is to be able to open your eyes and do it right in the moment mm. and be able to self-regulate and change the, the frustration from some experience in your life back to the energy of your future. Now, that requires great awareness and great effort. But if you have a community of people that are practicing this on a daily basis and they're connected to their future because that's where they're in their mind is, mm -hmm. they begin to want the future more than the emotions the of the past. So we've done enough measurements now, Lewis, to know that we can teach people how to do that. And we have evidence that people can sustain it for 45 minutes to an hour. It's a skill now. They know that they know how to do it. So now they have brain coherence and heart coherence. Well, once the heart begins to become orderly and coherent, it acts as an amplifier and it drives mm. energy to the brain. So now the brain is getting more energy once the heart is open and then you're thinking a different set of thoughts. And those thoughts produce different chemicals for you to feel more of that. And here comes... Uh, nitric oxide from oxytocin mm. and then all of a sudden your heart literally starts to swell. It literally begins to open up and there's more energy going there and now you're coming from a different level of mind. Right. When you have coherence in the brain and heart, you have a laser of energy and it could read information much better. You're living in stress and your brain is shifting its attention from one person to another problem, to another thing, to another uh, place to go. Each one of those things, there's an assignment of neurological networks in the brain. So the arousal of the stress hormones drives the brain yeah. into this high frequency and you're trying to control and predict everything in your life. And those, your brain circuits are firing like a, like a lightning storm in the clouds. When your brain's incoherent, you're incoherent. And, mm -hmm. and you can't, you don't have a signal. You're, you, you don't have a Wi-Fi signal. You're not connected to the field. How could you, how could you connect to energy and information if your signal hasn't become orderly? Mm. So that when people synchronize their energy into coherence, 
coherence. They can synchronize to a possibility in the future. And the synchronicities that are feedback from the environment are just a reflection of your energy. And that's the universe saying, follow the breadcrumbs, do it again, follow it again, do it again. And now all of a sudden the person's not waking up in the morning like, oh, I gotta meditate now to create my future. They're, they're kind of going like, I'm getting out of bed because I don't yeah. want the magic to end, right? They wanna, they wanna sustain that state so that the old reality that they've lived in begins to transform into something new. And because there's no longer a vibrational match with everyone and everything in their past, present reality, mm. there's a vibrational match to their future. And now mm. their future is starting to give them signals. Thoughts, uh, to me, produce an electrical charge in the quantum field. And feelings produce a magnetic charge in the quantum field. Mm. And how you think and how you feel broadcasts an electromagnetic signature that influences every single atom in your life. The thought sends the signal out. Now think about this. And the feeling draws the event back. So you mm. could have the intent that you want wealth, you want health, you want success. That's your intent. That's your thought. But if you're waiting for the experience to happen, to feel it, then you're not drawing the experience to you because you're not feeling the emotion, right? So then teaching people once again how to balance their thoughts and feelings because you can you can enter that cycle either place. Sometimes we do a meditation, we start opening our heart, we start elevating the body's energy, and then those emotions can drive certain thoughts of your future. Mm -hmm. Other times you open your awareness, you create brain coherence, you have the vision of your future, you begin to emotionally experience it. However you want to jump on that cycle, uh, and then sustain it. Because the longer you're conscious of that energy, the more you're drawing your future to you. So then most people spend their lives, right? They, we live in this realm called space-time, three-dimensional reality, and you move your body through space in three-dimensional reality, it takes time. Yeah. So everything, all your goals, all your dreams, all your visions, you're gonna have to get your body up and drag it through space every day to pay off that, you know, that home that's in your future. When you can hook up to that field, then your brain processes a new stream of consciousness, uh, and that consciousness uh, uh, coexists with energy. So all of a sudden, you have a very transcendental moment, and your inner world uh, starts becoming more real than your outer world. And those moments then leave lasting impressions in our brain because you feel the energy of that experience. And when you feel altered in some way, because you feel more electric or more alive, you pay more attention to the images in your brain and you're starting to create memories. And now the brain becomes wired differently. And I think that you perceive a broader spectrum of reality. We teach people how to create brain and heart coherence and it has biological effects. In four days, we were able to produce some, some of those significant changes. That's supernatural. But then I thought, well, they're doing it in an environment where their eyes are closed, music is soft, there's no threat, there's mm. no danger. They can, we now know that they can create brain and heart coherence in a safe environment. So then I thought, <clears throat> what about when they return back to their lives and they start reacting, they go unconscious, they'll forget the skill. And it's not enough to just do it with your eyes closed. Mm. You gotta be able to regulate internal states oh. independent of the conditions in your external environment. That's how you master your environment. So I thought, well, let's put them in challenging situations that would cause them to feel a survival emotion like fear or anger not so much anger, but, but discomfort, or they don't believe they can go any further, or they, they hear voices in their head that say quit. And this is where people stop in their life. Mm. This is where they go unconscious. So if they're in that potentially emotional situation, and we teach them right in that moment to stop for a moment, and of course the addiction of those chemicals are telling you to not, but to start changing their breathing, to start regulating their internal states. If they can do that, then they would be mastering the moment and that's a victory. And those moments add up for the positive. Yeah. So as a person pushes themselves past where they normally go, fear turns into freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, the contraction of insecurity turns into confidence and power and that's energy being released out of the body now. That's when people start to have their breakthroughs and they're so proud of themselves that they've gone further, that they that they want more of it. They're, they're, and if they've just overcome that potentially difficult situation, when they return back to their lives, they're gonna mm -hmm. be faced with difficult situations and they're gonna go, give me a minute. And they're gonna ground themselves in coherence again. And they're gonna say, this is nothing compared to what I just did. So what's happening now is that people are having instrumental, profound breakthroughs by teaching them how to do that with their eyes open. Mm -hmm. It's the next level. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanna keep 
creating these because people with MS and lupus or spinal cord injuries or handicaps, they start looking and they start going, no, I'm not going to be my disease today. Mm. And they they move through these challenge activities. And I'm telling you that now they're, they're no longer that same person. I mean, mm. we've seen this. 